The Canon EOS R10 was recently announced and the very first thing I thought of when I saw the specs for the Canon R10 was, could this possibly be a replacement for the Canon M50? In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the details and trying to make a determination whether or not that's possible. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Freely. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Canon EOS R10. It was recently announced as of this article, May 24th. So I'm over here four days late. <laughs> when I saw the announcements for the R10 and all the details related to it and seeing who this was made for and the line of cameras that they're trying to replace um, that being the rebel series or the three digit D series so complicated these naming conventions is there a possibility that these cameras can replace the M line of cameras in particular the M50 which is probably one of the most popular mirrorless cameras right now especially for the creator space like on YouTube I'm really curious about that possibility so I'm gonna be looking at this article by deep review um, and just going through the initial review of the R10 and kind of just telling you guys all the details. So let's go through all the details of the R10 and kind of compare it with what we already know with the M50 and go from there. It looks really similar to the Rebel cameras um, just for the way it's built. It just looks a little bit more bulkier, definitely bit bigger than the M50 right off the bat. Canon has announced the R10, a 24 megapixel entry level APS-C mirrorless camera for the RF mount. So right off the bat, it basically has all the specs of the M50. It's 24 megapixel and it's an entry level APS-C mirrorless camera, meaning it's crop sensor, just like the M50. But the only difference being it has the RF mount. So you can take advantage of all the R mount lenses, although they're gonna be very expensive lenses. From what I can see right off the bat of this is that if you're getting into cameras for the first time, you just wanna get entry level, this is the one you go for. And you have the benefit of having the entire R lineup um, at your disposal, as opposed to the M50 where you only have really the M mount natively. Um, you can buy Canon EF and EFS mounts. You can use their older EF and EFS mount lenses. So it's being made with the RF mount, which is already pretty good. Although it's gonna be a little bit expensive to buy some of these lenses, unless you go for like, like a Sigma or Tamron lenses. Those also work really well. So it also arrives alongside its sister model, as it says here, the R7, which looks a lot more like a 90D, while this one is more in line with the Rebel series and like I said, the triple digit D, D series DSLRs. Let's look at the key specifications, like I mentioned earlier, 24 megapixel, APS-C CMOS sensor with dual pixel autofocus, up to 23 frames per second shooting, 15 with the mechanical shutter, over sample with 4K up to 30 frames uh, 30p and 4k 60p with crop true hdr video with 10-bit pq footage uh, 2.36 dot oled viewfinder 2.04 million dot fully articulating rear touchscreen card slot and then built-in pop of flash they have some pricing for this already so the r10 will be available body only for a recommended selling price of 979 us dollars just body only a kit option with the 18 to 45 for 1099 and the 18 to 150 for 1379 so it's already a pretty steep price for this camera sub 1000 if you're just getting the body but the m50 was originally announced at 779 um, for the body only and then 899 if you wanted the 15 to 45 kit lens and then 1249 for the 1545 and a second lens of 55 to 200 you can already see that the pricing is a little bit different one is at 900 dollars with a kit lens and one is just body only for 979. So for entry level people, that's already kind of a lot that you be spending on an APS-C camera, especially when you can get the RP for around the same price. But if you're just entry level, it makes sense to go for these kind of cameras because you don't want to like pour all this money into like a full frame and then you end up you don't like it for some reason. So I can I can kind of see um, why you would still go for cameras like this. But let's go back to the original question of this video: is like, can this be? a replacement for the M50. Let's continue on with this article here. Can says the sensor is a new chip that's never been used before, but it hasn't given any details about how it's changed. The Canon EOS R10 gets a completely revised autofocus system with algorithms derived from those in the EOS R3. So the R3 is already, you know, it's a much higher model of a camera, but see that they have some of the autofocus from that camera is actually pretty good to see. Specifically, that means it gains subject recognition modes, allowing it to reliably identify and track humans, animals, or vehicles. So they have a lot of cool different like autofocus algorithms. So that's pretty handy. M50 doesn't have any of those. So I guess if you're looking for stuff like that, if it's worth it to you to spend another additional $300 for autofocus and the RF mount so far, 
this might be for you. The R10 gains a series of scene modes to support the photographer. These include a mixture of original ideas and options we've seen under other brands of cameras. For instance, there's a focus stacking mode, panorama mode, options such as panning mode. It can shoot UHD 4K footage. The 4K 30 uses the full width of the sensor, so there's no crop. And you have the 4K 60, although they're gonna add like a 1.6 crop, I believe. So from the picture right here, it shows that the autofocus button is like on the front of the camera and it's like this like like little wheel turny thingy, which I think is a good design on change. Cause at least for the M50, the autofocus and the switch between autofocus and manual focus is like regulated to the left button. It's kind of in a weird place because sometimes I accidentally end up pressing that button and it's like in manual focus. So I have to like reach behind the camera and then press the left button, which doesn't always end up because I end up pressing the wrong button. Having it on the front of the camera is actually a pretty smart move, especially when a lot of people are just taking more video uh, nowadays. And if I didn't mention this earlier, this also has a fully articulating screen, which is great. The viewfinder is an OLED viewfinder, which I'm not sure if that's the same thing as the M50 where it's just electronic viewfinder. I know OLED looks a little bit better, but I'm curious to see like how much better. Going into the battery, it uses an LPE17 battery, which was used also in the Canon M6, I believe, which is, is better already than the M50 batteries. They, uh, they use the LPE12 batteries. And just from experience, these batteries do not last long. I've told this story before, but several years ago, I went on a trip to Japan and I brought like, I think like three or four of the um, LPE12 batteries that the M50 uses. And just that, en that alone was not enough to last throughout the entire day because I was going between photos and video and just back and forth, but just did not last me throughout the day. Albeit, I did use these third party batteries, so that could be why. But at the same time, like most people just don't have the budget and rather just go with the third party batteries because they're cheaper. It's also a big hassle too when you have like three, four, five batteries and then you have to charge all of them. But then the battery problem has not really been an issue for me anymore because I use the battery grip now and I've been using this for like literally years now and it's probably the most used tool for the M50 because I just barely, I barely charge my battery. So hopefully um, since this is using the LPE17 batteries, which do last longer than the LPE12, hopefully the company that uh, makes these battery grips for the M50 and the M6 also ends up making one for the R10 at some point because I would really love to see that and just increasing the battery that much, this would make this camera like a beast. All right, so the R10, what do I think of it right now? So I think it's a has a potential of being like a M50 kind of like replacement. There are a lot of improvements from a audience standpoint, they're pretty much targeting the same audience. I think the, the biggest thing about this that's gonna turn off a lot of people is the price point. $700 um, for a camera and a kit lens versus a camera like the R10, which it has all the new tech. You have the entire R line of lenses at your disposal, albeit it's gonna be quite expensive. I think that's gonna be the main thing about this camera that's gonna kind of push away the more entry level because even then, if you want to get an R10, you're willing to dish out $1,099 or $1,100, you might as well just get the Canon RP, right? It's a full frame. Although it is a little bit of an older camera, you you still get like 26 megapixels on, on this one, for example. Um, like I said, full frame. So I guess to say, depending on who you are and what you're looking for, because M50 as of right now is still very for affordable for most people. I think most people are still gonna be going for the M50. Although there are some cons to that that I talk about in another video. So if you wanna check that out, check the card above. But in conclusion, I, and I'd love to get my hands on it and try it out because it is an R camera and has a lot of the RF mount lenses, which I which I really love. But yeah, what do you guys think about the Canon R10? And also the other model that was announced, the R7, which one would you guys rather have? The R7, the R10, do you think you would upgrade to a camera like the R10? Do you think it's even worth it? Leave it all in the comments below. If you guys wanna know my thoughts of why you should buy an R10, just from the initial impressions that I have been doing research on, check the video up top. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.